Howdy folks, this is Tony here bringing you my opinion of the 2022 midterm elections, what happened and why it happened. Now, first thing I want to say is the reason why I did not give any predictions about what I think was going to happen was because I saw how much of a mess 2020 was and how very little had actually been done to fix the problems in 2020. And so based on that, I'm not going to trust the polls. I'm not going to listen to anything because guess what, guys? When it comes to this idea of a wave, oh, a blue wave. Oh, yeah, like the blue wave that was supposed to happen in 2018 and Republicans still kept the Senate and Amy Coney Barrett ended up on the Supreme Court. Or, oh, the red wave. Oh, yeah, the red wave that allowed the Democrats to maintain control of Congress. So all of these waves that are supposed to happen, these are just sensational terms that people use to get you in your feelings. If you're a Republican and you hear about a blue wave, oh, now you're scared. You want to tune into the new, the conservative news. And if you're a Democrat and you hear about a red wave, oh, now you're scared and you want to tune into the liberal news and find out what you can do. All these are our marketing terms for reporters and pundits to hustle you, get you into your emotions and get you thinking about an outcome that may not actually happen. So I don't pay attention to any of that stuff. The fact of the matter is really the status quo kind of got maintained. And here's what we really need to focus on. I don't care what political spectrum side of the political spectrum you're on. We can agree on this. We need what I'm going to call, we need zero suspense laws when it comes to elections. When it comes to early voting on the day of the election, we need to know how much of the early vote went for each candidate. We need to know how far ahead whoever is in the polls based on the early voting. When it should not be, oh, we go to election day, we vote, right? The in-person total gets counted. And then based on that, we then now add however much of the late vote that came in or however much of the mail-in vote. No, here's what we need. We need three simple election reforms that I think everyone can agree on. Number one, there should be required in federal elections to be at least one debate before any voting, early voting, mail-in voting, doesn't matter. There needs to be at least one debate before any amount of voting takes place. Look at what it happened with Oz versus Fetterman. Look at what happened with Trump versus Biden. There are many Pennsylvania voters that said, had I seen this debate first, I'd have voted differently. Well, why did you throw your vote away by voting early? What we need to do is have at least one debate per election in federal elections for every candidate before any early voting takes place. That's reform number one. Reform number two, the zero suspense law. That's what I'm calling it. You need to know exactly how far ahead or how far behind your guy is before you go to vote. How would that look? Basically, they need to end early voting two weeks before uh, election day takes place. And then that gives them two weeks to count everything and have the totals and don't change those totals. Now we know on election day how far behind or how far ahead our guy is. Now we can go vote and the in-person vote needs to be tabulated then and there. And that leads me to solution number three. It needs to be illegal to have any kind of changes to the totals after two hours from the close of the polls because we're a first world country, right? If we are using machines to count our votes, then in theory, you would expect that those machines will be able to do things faster and more accurately, right? So then why do we have to wait until Friday? Why do we have to wait weeks to find out who got elected? If we're a first world country with the world's best technology and we can't even do a simple addition problem, that is dumb. So we need to make it illegal to drag. That's the third point. We need to make it illegal to drag the election out several days. No, you need to know within two hours. So first, these are my three reforms I would advocate for. First, no, no early voting before one debate takes place. Second, all of the early voting needs to be tabulated and we need to visibly see the totals when we go to the polls in person. And third, it shall not take more than two hours to tabulate the vote. And if it takes more than two hours, then that's going to cause some problems. So we need to know that very night who won so that both sides can trust elections again, so that both sides can realize, okay, it's, it's, it's a fair election. Because if you're dragging it out, that looks very suspicious. Think about this. Imagine this. Imagine you go to work and your boss should pay you, right? Come payday, your money's not there. And your boss is like, wait a minute, I need to calculate your paycheck correctly. And they drag your paycheck out and out and out. And then you don't know when you're going to get paid. 
That's kind of how it feels like us as voters when we vote and then we don't know how long it's going to take until our vote gets counted. That's kind of an insult. And we as Americans deserve better than that. Those are the reforms that I would personally push for. I hope you would push for those at your local and state level and that hopefully they would trickle up into the federal level. Now, that's uh, when it comes to the actual voting side of it. There's no reason not to know who won in Arizona right now. There's no reason not to know who won in Nevada. This is ridiculous and it needs to stop so that both sides can at least come have a peaceful discourse. Now, on to how the election went and why that happened. I uh, personally have seen a lot of conservatives say that Trump was on the ballot and he lost, or Trump did made some bad moves and he cost everybody the Senate. Uh, first of all, Trump was not on the ballot. Yes, you had some candidates Trump endorsed, but Trump hasn't been the one in office on the Republican side. I truly believe that the blame for there not being a red wave goes to two men, Mitch McConnell and uh, Kevin McCarthy. Kevin McCarthy for not actually standing behind America First candidates the way he should have done, and Mitch McConnell for one reason and one reason alone, bipartisan gun control. Think about this. If people are looking to Republicans, or you want people to look to Republicans to stand up for your rights and protect you from Biden's overreach, and these same Republicans are stabbing you in the back with federal gun control, you don't think that's going to black pill a lot of conservative voters, make them stay home, make them maybe not back your guy, make them say to hell with it, the uh, federal government is lost, let me just focus on my state and local elections. That might actually be why you see a lot of split ticketing where people just don't vote for the federal candidate or they vote for the Democrat one, but at the local level, they vote for the Republican one because they know local conservatives are fighters. Federal conservatives are losers. And that might actually be why you saw what you saw where there's no red wave, where Democrats pretty much are going to, it's looking like they're going to keep control of the legislature. That is why. Because federal Republicans do not fight. Maybe a couple of them do. Rand Paul and Jim Jordan, maybe that's about it. But the rest of them, you know, by and large, don't fight the way that those two men that I just named fight. Ted Cruz is a fence sitter, you know, but here's my point. You have a lot of people who will say conservatives need to moderate more. Conservatives need to give up, uh, you know, give up the conservative stance on the LGB. They need to give up the conservative stance on abortion. They need to come more to the center. What center? The left side of the political spectrum is all the way over there in the Pacific Ocean. So there really is no center if one side is off the deep end. This isn't the this isn't the 90s. This isn't the 80s and the 70s where Democrats from that era could at least agree. Like I'll tell you this, Democrats from John F. Kennedy's day would not be able to get elected on the Democrat ticket. They would be somewhere closer to where Joe Manchin is or something like that. And he's still to the left of the rhinos in the Republican Party. So my whole point is this whole Republicans, if they had softened their stance, they could have won more. Oh, really? How did that work out for Lee Zeldin? Lee Zeldin, uh, if you don't know, he actually voted in the House of Representatives to codify uh, LGB or codify gay marriage, codify Arbitzfeld v. Hodges, which is something that, you know, I'm like, okay, I don't, I don't like this guy. But anyway, that's what he voted for. And guess what? He still lost to Kathy Hochul. They don't want the slightly more conservative version of their uh, of who they vote for. If they want a communist who wants to crush Christians, who wants to crush the family unit, who wants to crush w Christian white men, if they want that, they're going to vote for that. They're not going to vote for the, the sloppy seconds, sorry version of it. It's no different than like when you have a church where they try to put like all the rock music and look like a nightclub or something. You, that's not going to draw people to Christ. Those people are going to go to the club, go for the real hardcore version of what they want. They're not going to go for your soft, sissified, gutted version of what they really want. So there's no point in trying to conform to what your opponent wants when that's not going to win you any votes. Again, Lee Zeldin got crushed by Kathy Oakle. He lost by like, what, six points, despite the fact that he had a lot of centrist stances. Listen, if you have a lot of people in America who believe wholeheartedly in socialism, centrist, you're not, you're not going to wean them off of socialism with centrism. You've got to be a fighter. You've got to actually stand for the things that you believe in. Because people, the common man, responds to sincerity and honesty. And if you come off like this limp-wristed shapeshifter because you want wine mom to love you, that's not going to win you any votes. 
Wine Mom responds to a firm man who stands up for what he believes, even if he's dead wrong. Take Obama, for example. Obama won the Wine Moms, despite the fact that he was dead wrong in a lot of his beliefs, because he was upfront about at least most of it. You know, he actually pulled the wool over America's eyes with the whole gay marriage thing, but that's a whole nother discussion. The whole point I am making is that moderation did not help any Democrats. Wasn't there a Democratic, correct me if I'm wrong, I could be wrong on this. I thought there was a Democratic Senate race in, out in the Midwest somewhere, it might've been Colorado or in the Southwest somewhere, where there was a candidate that distanced himself from Trump, did everything polite to please the wine moms, and he still got blown away. The whole point I am making is that moderation isn't the answer. The real answer to the social divide in our country, and I'm just gonna be brutally honest with you, is expatriation. There are only two ways to solve this. We either need to split America up into two countries and fund everybody moving where they wanna go so we can split it up. Because if you have an America that believes that America was founded on evil, racist, white supremacist principles, that America is a sexist hegemony that hates the little guy and that all white men are inherently racist and that the Bible is just a tool of evil and that you need, if you have an America that believes that and spits at the Constitution, sneers at the Bible, that version of America that set up Chaz and Chop, they are not going to be able to coexist with people who believe in the Bible, people who like the Constitution, people who stand when it's time for the Pledge of Allegiance. These are two separate Americas, and that's what you saw on the ballot today. And all I'm saying is the side of America that believes in, you know, traditional values, they're not going to be able to live in a state where people are counting the ballots that don't believe in those values. Likewise, the people who live in a conservative state who have the left-wing values, they're going to feel like, oh, oh, voter suppression, because both sides don't trust elections. On the left, they say, oh, voter suppression of minorities, voter suppression of this and that group. And on the right, they say the Dominion machine is evil. The Dominion machine is being controlled by a remote server and is tabulating things wrong. If neither side trusts elections, what do you think is next? Physical fighting, probably. My whole point is to avoid that, we need to do one of two things. Either A, split America up into two Americas and let each side play their own vision out and see where it goes. Or option B is... Everybody who hates America and wants to leave, we should, as taxpayers, I will gladly pay for your ticket to go somewhere else. Yes, that is one area. I, I believe in lower taxes. But if you got to raise my taxes for a decade to help people who don't like America leave, then sure, let's do that. Because I don't believe you should be forced to stay somewhere that you hate so badly. That's cruel against you. I believe you should be allowed to leave and strike out on your own and try your idea. And if it works out, have a good day. If it doesn't work out, I told you so. But then we just move on peacefully. So those are my opinions. We need election reform in this country. And I believe that Mitch McConnell compromising with the left on gun control did a lot to dampen conservative spirit. But not only that, his ineffective leadership of pulling candidates out, pulling funds away from key races, that affected things a lot. So do I expect much to change going forward? No. I believe that Biden's agenda is going to keep on trucking on. And I just pray that God Almighty will stop him in a way that gives God the glory. But otherwise, just do the best you can. Love your family. Be active in your local elections. And hopefully those effects will trickle forward. But I don't walk away defeated from the midterms. I don't walk away joyful from the midterms either. Even if by some fluke, Republicans get 51 in the Senate and Republicans get a slim House majority, that's not going to change anything. Make the best out of your life and stop worrying about what these rich people who secretly hate your guts are going to do for you. They're not going to do anything for you. You need to do something for you. You need to start a business. You need to rally your community. You need to build actual strong churches that preach the truth so we can scrub America's moral character clean of the blight that's on it right now. That's for you to do. You can't be waiting on the government to fix things. Because if you're sitting there, biting your nails, oh, how's this election going to go? That's going to fix my life. You know what you're doing? You're depending on the government. And you call yourself a conservative when you're waiting for the right government to come and fix it. I don't hang my hat on Trump. I don't hang my hat on DeSantis. I don't hang my hat on Biden. I don't hang my hat on McCarthy. I don't hang my hat on McConnell. I hang my hat on God. 
And it's time for you to do the same. God bless.